but <laughs> I see God as like the ultimate goodness, truth, honor, but also being like existence. And so the further you're going to separate from God, you're going to, you know, not cease existing, but sort of cease existing in a sense, cease mm -hmm. having wholeness, having peace. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so the hardness of heart is going to lead to decreation to put it in biblical terms. What do you think? How do you think that compares to Allah, who is the greatest of deceivers? Well, the first thing I've, I've, I've been thinking about this, it wasn't on topic till you asked me just now and brought in Islam. But every <laughs> <laughs> every every single one of these verses, you can understand them better if you have more context, right? So if you yes. read the entire Bible and you look at how it's this story, it's a complex story where God's wanting to dwell with us and uh, experience, have us experience him and be in his presence and how our own hardness is getting in the way of that. But he creates the bridge for us to get to him through Jesus Christ. And there's this, and all the books point to that major theme of this attempt to recreate Eden, to recreate this uh, intimacy between us and God. And so if you look at these individual verses, you'll get more and more data and understanding about them the more you read around them. But a lot of times, in, especially in Hadith or in uh, the Quran, one verse will have nothing to do with the next one. Like I was reading in Surah 4 last night, and the very end of the verse, it went into, it made me giggle because it was had just so nothing to do with what was going on before it. I don't remember what, it like went into the inheritance laws hmm. or something, and it had nothing to do with the passage before it, which was... Uh, you know, it's hard to remember. You know how when you have a weird dream that one part doesn't feed directly into another and into another, yes. and you wake up and you can't remember? That's what reading the Quran is like. Like each of the segments has nothing to do with the next segment. And, the, and each of them, I mean, over and over, it's like the sinners will go to hell and burn and the believers will go to the gardens where there's streams. It has said that so many times that it's starting to make me laugh when I see it. You know, I, I feel like what new atheists think Christianity is, that's actually what Islam is. Yes. Oh, that's so good. I like that. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They they treat honestly, if you look at this website, the Skeptics Annotated Bible, he honestly treats the Bible as if it's the Quran, where he takes individual verses or little passages out, isolates them compares them to another isolated passage and goes, see, we have a contradiction here. You can actually say that about the Quran yes. because it's so fragmented. Yeah. Well, and but, they interpret well, it in fragmented manners. So like, it, right. if you read like Ibn Kathir or the Taf Tafsir, it's always fragmented from whatever the context is around it. Mm -hmm. and, and for those who don't know, there's also this secondary body of literature that's not as binding or primary as the Quran, which is the Hadith. And so the Shia and Sunni are going to have different Hadith, but it's basically like these sets of thousands of sayings of Muhammad that... Oh, so many thousands. Yeah, I have Sahih Bukhari on my on my shelf. It's like oh eight gosh. volumes or nine volumes. I can't remember. Yeah, just uh, thousands of sayings, and one has nothing to do with the next. And bless them, whoever the editor was, they tried to organize them by topic, but it's just a mess. Oh, boy. Yeah. Ooh. But that's nothing like the Bible. The Bible, it has all kinds of different genres, and yeah, this is something to take into. There's all kinds of different time periods. There's all kinds of different genres. There's all kinds of different specialized contexts. Like if you're quoting a Pauline letter, he's writing to some church that's in a specific location in the first century, mm -hmm. like usually somewhere in you know Turkey. And so uh, it's way harder to say that there's a contradiction there because there's just so much context with whatever it is you're reading. Mm-hmm. Well, just the and fact that, you know, I'm not I'm not a biblical scholar, but, you know, the, the things that are being brought up as contradictions, you know, I can spend 20 minutes and dig into it a little bit and find the answers, you know, where the Quran is basically like a, like thoughts in a blender. You know, there's no it's just kind of a dis, disjointed mess where this is a cohesive, simple to understand for for a simple person, you know, it's like a kid had a had a book report due on the Bible and he didn't read it, and he just heard about some stuff 
Maybe he like skimmed through some Gnostic Gospels and then he just spit something out.